Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to show you what I do with some of my practice watercolor paintings. Because I paint a lot. And lots of people don't practice because they're worried about what they're gonna do with the painting afterward if they don't like it and they're gonna waste a lot of paper. And this is a couple of paintings that I wasn't really thrilled with. I was trying to do some kind of crazy sky stuff. I got a lot of weird bleeds and things and blooms and ah, there's some beautiful areas in there, but as a whole painting, it didn't work. And I do a lot of paintings that I'm never gonna frame. This was something I did for Earth Day recently, and like, what am I gonna do with that? So let's turn it into something else. And then here's one where I was practicing painting the tulip fields and a beautiful big sky. But I did this again later and it came out much more beautiful. So what am I gonna do with this one? Well, let's do something else with it. So I started cutting them down into bookmark size pieces. And um, I could either use just the top section, I could use the bottom section, I could cut them in half and use both sections. Really depends on what you see in each little section of your whatever your piece is. And this one is part of that globe. And I'm gonna leave that white so I have that really stark difference between all that color and all the white. And I'm hitting this with a little powder bag so that my embossing powder doesn't stick. And I'm gonna stamp a sentiment in some Versamark. And I'll show you in a little bit the uh, stamp sets. Forgot to do that when I was filming this section. But I've got it in my Misty so I can stamp over again in the same spot. And I'm going to stamp this sentiment, this little phrase, and it's the sentiments are in these two inch columns. So they work great for two inch type of bookmarks. And after it's all stamped in this Versamark, which is basically an invisible ink, I'm gonna throw some embossing powder on it. This is white embossing powder. I have bought a couple of these little jars of it so I could put it in a container like this. Spoon it on. And since I use white more than anything else, this made sense. I'll show you how I do my other embossing powders for those who don't know. So flick off the excess and then I'll grab my heat gun and the heat gun will melt that embossing powder and it gets more intense, more bright. If you don't use that powder bag in the first place, you'll get little stray bits all over the place. So it's helpful to do that because it kind of gets rid of the static on the page before you do your embossing. So that one was really cool. And then here's a couple I'll show you a couple of these others while I'm doing the stamping portions. And I was trying to see which sections I liked most in them. Did I like the, the part with the yellow on it? On this painting, the yellow came out kind of weak. I wanted something a little more intense, that sort of thing. But there's some beautiful areas that I could do some embossing of sentiments in. You could stamp flowers and all sorts of things all over these. But I want to show you some really specific tricks that I came up with for some of these. This one is cut into two and a two and a quarter inch strips. They were a little wider. I ended up cutting them down eventually. But you can see how each one will have a whole different flavor to it depending on what exactly you decide to use from them. And this is the two sentiment sets. These are both from Penny Black and they're meant for Bible journaling but I use them for bookmarks because they work really well. And they're, like I said, they would fit well on a two inch column like you would get in a Bible if you were doing Bible journaling. But for these, I'm going to do a whole bunch of them and save them for my church for a fundraiser later on in the year. So now I'm line one up again in the Misty, get it all set up the way I want it and ink it up with plain black ink. You can do all different kinds of ink colors. And again, I love the Misty because you can re-ink it and stamp it again and get it all lined up and perfect which is great. You can align your sentiments in an area that's dark so that the color will show up. And on this one, I was thinking that I was gonna use white and I decided to use gold. So I'm gonna use some gold WOW embossing powder. And some colors you want light color behind them and some you think can handle dark. Uh, on this particular one, it's gonna be a little harder to see once it's embossed when it's on dark. And this is one of those places to experiment with that and find out how dark can you go, how light can you go for making each one of them look great. But this wow embossing powder, this gold is really pretty and becomes really beautiful and shiny. And it'll be really elegant on the finished bookmark. So heat that baby up and 
it will be ready to go. And I am going to alter these after all of the embossing is done. So hang with me if you're just not somebody who's been wanting to learn how to emboss. So I'm going to paint over top of these. I wanted stronger color, so I'm just going to do another layer on top because I used ink that is uh, waterproof. If you don't use ink that's waterproof, then you might not want to paint over top of them. <laughs> but I used ink that's waterproof. And I'm just going to layer other colors on top. And I'll experiment with how dark or how light I want to get it. And I cut them longer in some cases than I needed them to be because I wanted to have room to decide, do I want it to be a really tall one? Do I want it to be a short one? Do I want to cut off certain areas? That kind of thing. But I'm just kind of playing around. Now this one has uh, really lightish purple behind all of this white embossing and I wanted some real strong contrast. So I just put some strong colors underneath of it and paint right over top of what's there. So if you have some paintings that weren't all that great, this is a great way to take just those sections that might have been okay, or even a section that was really looked terrible on your actual painting and add some color to it on top so you really can't see anything underneath of it. All you get is this beautiful wash of color underneath. And you could also practice with what colors blend well into others, which ones layer well on top of others. It's a great time to experiment. And here's that gold one, and I'm going to add a whole lot more color on there to try to make that gold show up more and spread out some purple colors, some pinkish colors, play around with it. You can use a lot of different techniques on these. This one, the color came out really soft and you can do really soft color, you can do really strong color. Really doesn't matter at all. It depends on what your preference is and just add, add some fun to them and add some other color. And trim off any areas that come out funky because there's no requirement for the size of a bookmark. You can make them short, you can make them tall. Now this one was the most interesting because this particular, this little part of the globe, there were some white spots, some white areas that it made the words a little difficult to write, so I or to read. So I put some color over them and then took a dry brush around the edges to smooth that out so it didn't look like I had big globs of color because I didn't want to interrupt the reading of the words, so just put some darker color around those to finish that off. And then there are some colors, some paints that are um, they're staining and then others that are not staining. And I wanted to test to see if these greens that I had used were staining or not by soaking it in water because there's sometimes when you can soak a piece of paper in water and get almost every bit of color out of it. So I threw it in a thing of water just to see what would happen. <laughs> And the other one, I'm just painting some phthalo blue over top of it. And look how beautiful that comes out. It softens the painting underneath and makes it a really good background for the sentiment that's there. Now this one clearly was staining. Those colors didn't come off at all. So I'm going to again add the blue right on top of them and let it soften out the image in the background and see how that works with the gold in the sentiment that I have there so that we can see whether or not that's going to be readable. If it's not readable, then all we do is toss it. And since I wasn't going to do anything with the painting anyway, none of this is a loss. It's a learning experiment to see what happens when I layer colors over top of each other, what's going to soften, what's not. On these guys from this, this painting, look at that pretty one with all the glitter in the embossing powder, I decided I didn't want those buildings in there. That was the only thing I didn't like about these, so I just painted over the buildings with a couple different greens and moved the color around until, you know, I kind of smoothed it out so I didn't have any hard edges that showed that there used to be a building in there. And just fluff around it with the dark green and then put some water around the edges to smooth it out so it would blend into the scene that was already there and not be funky and weird. Line it up, uh, get it up there with my trees and kind of in the same color, add a little more dark green if it didn't fully disappear. And that's really all I had to do. So each one of these, I added a black layer and then a color layer and then another black layer. And on one of them, I actually just cut the whole scene in two parts just to see what that would do to have two sections on one, one bookmark. I think they all have come out really beautiful, but you can see you can leave extra space at the bottom, extra, extra space at the top. You could stamp a flower on some of these. 
You could add other things to them. There's a ton you could do. And these three, I think, are my absolute favorites out of all of them, because look at how beautiful they came out. And that was just from a painting that I did on Earth Day just to put something onto Instagram. And here I was able to use it for a project. So I hope this gives you some ideas for what you can do with some of your paintings, that you tried things, they didn't work out. Uh, it might give you some encouragement to practice if you know you can do something else with that painting after it's all done. Thank you so much. Click on my face to subscribe. There's more to see here and classes in the doobly-doo, and I'll see you next time.